if you keenly observe, every kid has characters taken from the parents. Yes, characters from both mom and dad. Have you ever wondered why this happens? Why do we find random characters in the kids which belong to the same parents? In simple language, we can say that it is because of the sexual reproduction in organisms. Yes, although the logical reasoning can be provided by genetics, we will not really get into the details of it. We will restrict ourselves to the major process responsible for this. Now you may wonder as to how sexual reproduction can be responsible for the variations in organisms. For this, we need to stop by the definition of sexual reproduction once again. Do you remember what it was? Let me help you. Sexual reproduction is the type of reproduction which involves fusion of gametes to give rise to new individual. Now here the term fusion of gametes is the answer to our question. Why is that so? This is because if we say that the zygote is formed with a fusion of gametes, then it means the newly formed individual will have a blend of characters. Thus, in order to learn sexual reproduction, we need to understand the gametes first. Gametes are sex cells and are different in both males and females. Do you know what they are called? Yes, we have come across these terms. The male gamete is called sperm while the female gamete is called ovum. In order to study them, we first need to take a glance at the reproductive systems. This will give us an idea of how the gametes are produced and help us understand the fertilization process better. So in this video, let us learn about the male reproductive system. To begin with, we take a look at the location where the sperms are exactly produced. These oval-shaped structures on either side are the ones we are referring to. The single structure is called testis, while the pair is called testes or simply a pair of testicles. Now these are an important part of the system and need to be protected, right? So we have a covering of skin over it. This forms a bag-like structure and do we have a name for it? Yes, the bag-like structure is called the scrotum. So the scrotum is the pouch which contains the testis. Now the sperms produced will have to travel in order to reach the female body. So who will make sure that the sperms are carried outside the testes? This responsibility is taken up by the mass of coils that we can see here. This is called the epididymis and the pair is called the epididymides. The mass then carries the sperms to this single connecting long coil. This is called the vas deferens. Where will the deferens carry it further? Directly outside the body? No, they will carry it into something called as the ejaculatory ducts. But where does the ejaculatory duct head to? It heads to a destination where the sperms get mixed with the nourishing fluid. Wait a second, what kind of fluid are we referring to? And why is it needed here? Basically, the sperms need nourishment to survive. Also, they need to be protected from acidic conditions coming their way. Hence, various glands come to the rescue by secreting a few important secretions. The first one is the seminal vesicle. It secretes a fluid that helps in nourishing the sperms. Can you see this bulb-like structure here? It is the prostate gland which helps in secreting the prostate fluid. Now the sperms floating in the fluids reach the urethra from where they can be released outside the body. But wait, all the secretions are not yet completed. This P-shaped gland found here gives another important secretion. It is called the Cooper's gland or even the bulbourethral gland. Now with this secretion, the formation of semen is complete. The semen is simply the fluid carrying the sperms. It is carried out by the urethra which runs through the penis. Now these sperms will reach the female reproductive system and only one among all will be able to carry out the fertilization of the ovum. But tell me one thing. Looking at the structure of this single sperm, can you guess whether it is a unicellular or a multicellular structure? It is a single cell. Although the structure may not seem to be that of a single cell, 
the sperm is definitely unicellular. It bears a head region called the nucleus. Then it has this middle part with the mitochondria for providing energy to swim across. But then who will help in the swimming process physically? That's the business of this tail region. The tail helps in the swimming activity. Now we are done with the basics of the male reproductive system. Let me quickly recap the process we saw above. The sperms are produced by the testes. The mass of coils called the epididymis carries the sperms to the vas deferens which is a long coil. From there it goes to the ejaculatory duct where it gets mixed with nourishing fluids. From there it reaches the urethra. And after the secretion from the Cooper's gland, the formation of semen is complete. So what will we learn before the fertilization process? Of course, the female reproductive system. Do watch our next video to learn more about it.